The English Huswife is a book of English cookery and remedies by Gervis Markham, first published in London by Roger Jackson in 1615. Markham's best known work, it was a bestseller of its time, going through nine editions, and at least two other reprints, by 1683. It was issued as a two-volume work, Country Contentments, the other volume being The Husbandman's Recreations. Although Markham disclaims authorship in the preface, he did adapt the recipes to suit current tastes, notably with sweet and sour sauces. The book contains what is probably the first published recipe for Banbury cake. Context Markham was the third son of Sir Robert Markham of Cotham, Nottinghamshire, and was probably born in 1568. He was a soldier of fortune in the Low Countries, and later was a captain under the Earl of Essex's command in Ireland. He wrote voluminously on many subjects, to the extent that his booksellers procured from him a declaration in 1617 that he would write no more on certain topics. Book The two-volume book was dedicated to Sir Theodore Newton. The English Huswife was issued as the second part of Coatry Contentments, in two books, the first, containing the whole art of riding great horses in very short time. Likewise in two new treatises The Arts of Hunting, Hawking, Coursing of Greyhounds with the Laws of the Leash, Shooting, Bowling, Tennis, Balloon and Sea. The second intitulated The English Huswife, containing the inward and outward virtues which ought to be in a complete woman, as her physic, cookery, banqueting stuff, distillation, perfumes, wool, hemp, flax, dairies, brewing, baking, and all other things belonging to an household. The first book is named on its first page as The Husbandman's Recreations. Approach Markham begins with a single paragraph disclaimer, starting thou mayest say, gentle reader, what hath this man to do with huswifery, he is now out of his element, and explaining that it is an approved manuscript which he happily light ed, on, belonging sometime to an honorable personage of this kingdom, who is singular amongst those of her rank for many of the qualities here set forth, Markham does not name the lady in question. Each recipe is given in a paragraph without a section heading, the title of the recipe being given instead in italics in the margin beside the recipe, as, sauce for veal, or, a puff pastry, sometimes the titles are written as goals, like to make gingerbread. The recipes are given without lists of ingredients, and mainly without quantities. Thus, the pancake recipe calls for two or three eggs, mixed with, a pretty quantity of fair running water, with the comment, there be some which mix pancakes with new milk or cream, but that makes them tough, cloying, and not so crisp, pleasant and savory as running water. The amount of flour in the pancakes is left up to the cook with the instruction, make it as thick as you think good with fine wheat flour. He includes the sweet spices cloves, mace, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and serves the pancakes strewn with sugar. The recipes rarely give any details of the heat or time required for cooking, thus the pancake recipe merely says, make them brown. But the book does explain how to roast meat so it is properly cooked. Lastly to know when meat is roasted enough, for is too much rareness is unwholesome, so too much dreeness is not nourishing. Therefore to know when it is in the perfect height, and is neither too moist nor too dry, you shall observe these signes first in your large joints of meat, when the stem or stroke of the meat offendeth, either upright, or else goeth from the fire, when it beginneth to shrink from the spit, or when the gravy which droppeth from it is clear without bloodiness. The recipe for, a very good, Banbury cake is probably the earliest published version. It calls for four pounds of currants, washed and dried, three eggs, beaten, yeast, barm, sweet spices, a pint of cream and a pint of warm milk, and unstated quantities of flour, butter and sugar. The dough is to be kneaded for, an or or more, while the cake is to be baked, according to the bigness. A version of this recipe, adapted for small cakes, was given in The Guardian in 2012. Contents The 128-page book begins with the table, a table of contents listing the tasks and recipes in the book. It does not name the book's chapters, into which it is in fact divided. The titles shown are those used as page headers, chapter 2 containing several of these. Chapter 1, Household Physic, 1 Chapter 2, Skill in Cookery. 36 Banqueting Stuff, 69 Distillation, 79 Musk Balls, and C. 81 Chapter 3, of Woola, Hemp, Flax and Cloth. 83 Dyeing of Wool. 83 Skill in Hemp, Flax, and C. 87 Chapter 4, of Dairies, Butter, Cheese. 104 Chapter 5, of the Office of the Brew House, and the Bake House. 120 Brewing, 120 Baking, 126 Editions The following editions were printed. 1615 First Edition. Roger Jackson 16 Underscore Underscore Second Edition. 16 underscore underscore third edition. 1631 fourth edition. 
Harrison 1637 reprinted 1649 5th edition, reprinted 1986 McGill Queens University Press, edited by Michael R. Best 1653 reprinted. Brewster 1656 6th edition. Brewster 1667 7th edition. Brewster 1664 8th edition. Sawbridge 1683 9th edition. Sawbridge Reception The British Library describes the book as a bestseller. It notes that although the title implies a female audience, only 5 to 10 percent of women were then literate, so most readers were clergymen or men of the gentry and the professions. It observes that Markham disclaimed authorship in the preface, but did adapt the recipes to suit the fashions of the day, with sweet and sour sauces, very much in vogue at the time. He also included recipes from France, Spain and Italy. Linda Woodbridge, reviewing Michael Best's edition of The English Housewife, describes it as a splendid modern text. She describes the maladies for which Markham proposed remedies as some picturesque, some desperate, as they included stinking breath which cometh from the stomach, pimpled or red saucy face, griefs in the stomach, desperate yellow jaundice, pissing in bed, falling of the fundament, and privy parts burned. The remedies make use of Curatives as homely as parsley, as exotic as dried stag's pizzle. She notes that in the two parts of country contentments, Markham expected the country gentleman to lead a purely recreational life, the country gentlewoman to have one long round of unremitting hard work. Quote, but Woodbridge notes that at least booksellers of the time were recognizing that a substantial market of literate female book buyers was something worth catering to. Kate Calhoun calls the book an enormously popular collection of culinary and medical recipes, which she characterizes as aimed squarely at the well-off middling sort. Quote dot. She describes Markham as always on the lookout for the detail that would make the difference. Giving as example the way he explains how to make pastry of different kinds, rye paste with hot water and a little butter for a long-lasting coffin. For meat pies. A good white crust. Somewhat thick. Of wheat flour with hot water or mutton broth and plenty of butter, and melting short paste, with flour dried out in a warm oven and gently mixed with eggs, butter and cold water, to be rolled thin and served hot around delicate foods like chicken or fallow deer. Notes References Sources Michael R. Best, Editor, The English Housewife, Toronto, McGill Queen's University Press, 1986. ISBN 0 7735 0582 2. Frederick Noel Lawrence Pointer, A Bibliography of Gervis Markham, 1568 1637, Oxford, Oxford Bibliographical Society, 1962. External links Markham, Gervis, Country Contentments, or the English Huswife, LSE Digital Library The Early 17th Century, Topics. Gender, Family, Household.